Hidden somewhere in this vast ocean of images is a picture of a teapot. But if you go searching for it, you will never find it. In fact, the only way to find anything in here is to stop looking for it. The discovery of the teapot, and more importantly, the steps needed to reach it, led to the mechanism used to get a population of neural nets through a maze which was specifically designed to defeat it. It's resulted in countless papers and articles, and it's called the novelty search. I've coded up the function in the original paper to check it out. And thank you to DataCamp for sponsoring this video. This is PicReader, an online tool which enabled people to steer the evolution of a set of images which in turn were the output from a neural network. It's no longer online, so I've coded up a light version to see what it could do. Users get to select images they're interested in to be the parents of the next generation. New images are generated by separate neural networks, which change from generation to generation by randomly mutating the weights and by adding notes and connections. It's detailed in this paper by Ken Stanley and others. The inputs are the X and Y coordinates of a pixel, along with the distance of the pixel from the center of the image. The outputs are the RGB color values for that pixel, or HSB values if you're so inclined. A new image is then built up, pixel by pixel, from the network. Nodes can have one of four activation functions, and are randomly assigned when the node is added. As you can imagine, the domain space is vast. A standard 24-bit color image results in a stupendously large dataset. The set was labeled every image in the original paper. While it's difficult to pin down the exact number, it is clear that the fraction of interesting images from the every image set is extremely small. If you need proof, try randomly generating images for a few hours and see how many interesting ones you find. This is all you'll see. Images generated by random networks do demonstrate the abstract structure afforded by their topology, but do not resemble anything familiar or useful. So, what did PicBreeder users find? It really is incredible that strangers over the internet were able to work together to find these gems in the vastness of the every image dataset. All they had to do was pursue what they found interesting and save the result. The saved image could then be used as a starting point or stepping stone for others to start from and explore further. This branching mechanism was baked into PicBreeder and allowed the history of all saved stepping stones to be tracked and catalogued. This in turn allowed the researchers to go back and see how the images were evolved from the initial set of conditions. The branching mechanism, which allowed people to build on the work of others, enabled the discovery of some remarkable images, ranging all the way from insects to planets and everything else in between. But these discoveries all had one thing in common. Nobody was searching for them. They all started in the same way. People pursued images they found interesting, selecting them to be the parents of the next generation. They searched for gems hidden in the noise, but didn't care what the gems looked like. They just wanted to find something interesting. Then somebody else would come along and take one of the stepping stones from the library and start to selectively breed from it, converge in a shape of their own that they found compelling. So this process organically emerged, one of dynamic treasure hunting followed by a loose convergence on an objective. There are loads of documented examples. Jupiter, for example, and its stepping stone looked like this. Note that there were many generations in between the two images that the explorer would have evolved prior to landing on the image of a planet. The famous teapot originated from an egg wearing a hat, and the E.T. lookalike alien eventually ended up as a sports car. The key point to note here is that the stepping stones and the final images have nothing in common. This was true for all the pick breeder discoveries, and it led the researchers to the following conclusion. If you start with an objective in pick breeder, you're going to fail. This is because the path you need to walk and the stepping stones you'll need to find are unknown to you. The stepping stones you'll need never resemble the final image, so somebody else has to go and explore and find new and interesting things. If you decide to evolve the teapot, you'll never find it. It's very easy to be deceived in pick breeder. Having stepping stones which seem to be close to the target is the wrong metric for progress. It has nothing to do with image matching. The sequence shows evolution guided by a single user with no explicit objective. The first image was selected from the initial population and progressed as shown to produce the published image known as the eye, which emerged after 12 generations. Getting a computer to do the same thing by following the fitness gradient toward the eye objective, steered by offspring that resembled an eye, took over 29,000 generations. They also concluded that the path to success is through not trying to succeed, and to achieve our highest goals, we must be willing to abandon them. And they weren't just talking about pick breeder. Innovation is a divergent process. Natural evolution, technology, culture, pick breeder, why do they work? 
A powerful, innovative process preserves diverse stepping stones, not because of where they might lead, not because they optimize an objective, but just for their own uniqueness. But how would these concepts work in other domains? Well, continuous education is one such example of stepping stones in life. I've been working my way through the Data Analyst career track on the DataCamp website. DataCamp is an online learning platform that makes acquiring new skills easier and more convenient for everyone. With courses for all levels, both newbies and pros can find great ways to grow their knowledge. DataCamp has over 350 data science courses designed by top experts. You can choose between either career or skills tracks and work at your own pace in a gamified environment which rewards progress and experience. I've also been checking out the Machine Learning Scientist career track, which covers both supervised and unsupervised learning mechanisms, along with tree-based models and linear classifiers in Python. Use my link in the description box below and check out the first chapter of any DataCamp course for free. But how will those concepts work in other domains? Well, the next step was the development of the novelty search. Testing it involved getting a population of networks to figure out how to get through a maze and land on a target. Conventional wisdom says to give them a fitness function related to how close they are getting to the objective. The closer, the better. With the fitter members dominating the gene pool, the population as a whole will end up biased towards relocating here and will get stuck. In order to get around the maze, mutations need to happen which sends the bots off in other directions. But if they die way out here, their fitness will be so low, the odds of those mutations persisting long enough to make a difference is very low. Over many generations, they never managed to get around the maze. It's been designed to deceive the bots into getting trapped at a local optima. So, much like PickBreeder, simply having an objective is no guarantee you'll find a way to it. So let's throw away the objective and steer the population using a different fitness function, one related to simply doing new and interesting things. Interesting, though, is hard to code for, but novelty is a close second. In this case, it's simply the average distance a bot is from a predetermined number of bots closest to it at the end of the generation. And it's not just the final resting place of the bots in this generation that are considered, but the final resting place of every bot from every generation since the start of the run. If it manages to finish in a spot where it can't even see the final resting spot of any bot ever, well that's pretty special, so it gets a stepping stone. And as these stepping stones represent the population discovering something new, they are stored and branched from. In the same way, new discoveries in Pickbreeder were branched from. Using this approach, the population quite quickly starts exploring the maze. It's not steered by any goal other than a need to find something new and to not rehash old ground. It can't be deceived because it's not trying to achieve anything. Even without stepping stones, over generations the population spreads out across the space of possible behaviours, continually ascending to new levels of complexity by expanding the newer networks to create novel behaviours as the simpler variants are exhausted. Novelty-based networks vastly outperform fitness-based ones in this test scoring a 98% success rate compared to less than 1%. I like the stepping stones approach. Throwing away objectives and just doing interesting things does seem to have some advantages if correctly applied in the right domain. I'm going to code up some more standard games and see if I can apply it. As always, thanks for watching.